Welcome to the Future of Teamwork. My name is Dane Grunewald, CEO of Huddle3 Group. And today I have Darren Tully joining me. Darren's uh, got some really cool titles. He's got CEO, culture coach, author, speaker, podcast host, and my favorite, chief of possibilities at Ignite Happy. So welcome to the show, Darren. Dane, I'm excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Looking forward to have a fun chat with you. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. I, I enjoyed just connecting prior to hitting the record button. And uh, there's a lot that you're doing right now in your world that that resonates with, with some of the guests that we've had on the show and some of the ways that we're feeling about our employees and the businesses that we run uh, and the communities that we're a part of. But perhaps for the benefit of, of our listeners, you can give us a little bit of a genesis story as to how you came to be um, working in this kind of world of possibility for, for people and teams. Yeah, that sounds that sounds great. I have been in corporate America for nearly 30 years. However, I was doing this side hustle for the six last six or seven years. And what does that really mean? Well, just under seven years ago, I was actually at a diversity and inclusion event. Uh-huh. And I felt like I was one of the good guys. I felt like I was a really helpful leader, inclusive and uh, it was kind and going through this four day immersion event with 25 folks of which there's only one of, I was one of five white males at this, uh, diverse, um, session. And I realized after a couple of days that I was part of the problem and I was, I was terrified. I was actually feeling shameful because I started to recognize that I wasn't noticing what was going on in the world because I do care. And I do care about all humans. And I had a purpose at the time to bring out the best in people all around me. Yet I realized I was swimming around in this bubble that was a bubble of sameness. So I was seemingly helping out people that were similar to me and unconsciously making it harder for people that were not like me. And yeah, I started to hear other people's stories and started to connect differently. And I actually... Not that you ever thought you could cry at work. I cried at this event openly because I wanted to let people know it wasn't intentional. It just happened. I wanted people to know that, that I cared and was committed to change. And I actually had a pink pen that day. And I, that's why all my colors are pink yeah. um, to do, to be my accountability reminder, to look for differences and to embrace it and to change my purpose, to bring out the light and the potential in all people and identify the possibilities that exist in all of us. And it actually led to a light up moment, which was my awakening with my daughter, where I found where joy comes from. And it's really within, it's within this light that's all, it's you know hiding inside of us. And it's been dimmed based on our society, based on what we're told to be, uh, who we were supposed to be. And I realized that I had this light within me that was dimmed. I was pretty uptight. I was, I started my career in finance. I was Mm -hmm. uh, focused on results. I was very successful. And then when I had this moment, I realized I needed to change. And when I, when I really thought about, about this, my bubble burst and I really thought I was going to be found out. And when I realized this bubble actually expanded so I could actually expand and invite the world in, which really sparked this journey for Ignite Happy. Like Ignite Happy is to actually embrace all humans to see the joy that's within them, to turn the light back up with them and to show that we all have it. We're all worthy of it. And that we're all different. We're all unique. We all have these amazing skills and possibilities that are waiting to come out. So that's what got me to write the book, Live Your Possible. That's what got me to start the podcast, Live Your Possible, uh, just to carry on these stories and to make the connections of other leaders that have overcome challenges and have been vulnerable and are willing to share these things out loud so we can all get better and grow and actually share how we can actually bring out the best in each other. And it's been quite the journey. There's there's much more to share yet. Yeah, that's kind of the launching off point, if you will. Yeah, that's, that's a great, it's a great uh, launch pad um, to be having that experience and now sharing that experience with others as you kind of continue on that journey. It, uh, there, there are a couple of uh, phrases that you used in there that really caught my eye. You talked about the bubble expanding rather than the bubble bursting. And that's a very sort of, um, optimistic sort of abundance mindset approach. Um, can you tell me a little bit more about what that felt like as you started to see that bubble expand? What were your experiences of teams that you were a part of or people that you were getting the opportunity to work with? I like how you shared that it's a level of optimistic abundance and you know possibilities, right? And 
and it it didn't feel that way at first because this bubble was filled with the air where I was living, where I was preserving what I had and uh, making sure it was going to continue and I wasn't going to share it. Not that I didn't intentionally uh, not share it. I I thought at that point that the air was going to be suffocated out. Yeah. It was going to be sucked out and I was going to be, I was going to have trouble from there on, uh, from that on, excuse me. And what I realized is that I needed to actually own this mm -hmm. and be vulnerable about it and to share that I'm going to commit to change and it's going to be something I'm going to do forever for the rest of my life. And I'm going to keep getting better at it. I'm going to be uncomfortable in different situations and I'm going to be expansive. I'm going to learn from other folks. I'm going to ask for folks, their perspectives and input. I was always taught to be a leader that had all the answers that couldn't say I didn't know and yeah. uh, I can do and move forward. And no, I had to slow down and invite and invite, you know, invite the world in and put my arm around the world. So there's, as you can see by the logo behind me, it's the brand, my brand logo, for this one eyed smile. And yeah. that the eye is really the eye of possibilities. It's where I was. And it's that bubble expanding, right? The smile is us expanding, welcoming the world, putting our arm around and looking at the, the world with joy and hope and saying, you know what? I believe in you, Dane. There's a light inside of you and I'm going to see it. I'm going to work past any thing that stopped me in the past based on where we're from, yeah. our differences, what we look like, differences of opinion, whatever. I'm going to yeah. see the light because you have a light, Dane, and I'm going to see it. And I think as leaders and, and colleagues, when we kind of interact during the day or in the community or at work, imagine if we could actually get rid of the barriers that are sitting there metaphorically or literally, literally today and actually just, yeah. hey, welcome you in and just kind of, I'm going to put myself out there as to say, I don't have all the answers. I'm not perfect. I'm going to keep learning. I'm going to be vulnerable with you because I want to share that it's okay. It's safe to do so. And my intentions are good to light you up. Yeah. I like that. And I like to light you up because it's a, it's a doing word. It's an action. It's not, Hey, we appreciate everyone. It's how do you appreciate them where you light them up? So that's, that's a real call to action. Yeah. I appreciate it. Cause it's a feeling like I had my light up moment when I found this one eyed smile, I actually found this thing when I was with my daughter, it was, we were, we were in the mode of connecting yet. I wasn't doing a good job at it. Cause I was on my smartphone doing work mm -hmm. and my daughter was finishing her homework and we agreed on this watermelon Italian ice. Dane, I don't know if you've ever had Italian ice. It's pretty good. It's really good. Right. So it was a watermelon. So it sounded healthy. So we actually took off the lid and there was some of this Italian ice that was kind of pushed up against the lid and I put it on the table, went back to my phone and pretended to hang out, put my phone down, she was done with the ice and she was really smiley and happy. And I'm like, oh, wow. And then out of the corner of my eye, I saw this one eyed smile. And remember, I'm looking for differences at this point. Yeah. And I said, oh my God, this is it. I showed, I turned this upside down. It was upside down looking at us. I said, Sadie, look at this. And she lit up. I yeah. lit up like the kid inside of me lit up. And what I realized, it's actually this level of like wonderment and awe and possibilities and and love and fun, all the stuff all at once came out. Yeah, it helped that yeah. my daughter helped me see it through her eyes. Yet I realized it's in within all of us. And I needed to reconnect back to that. When I when I go back to that thinking of that mindset when I was about that her age at that time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that was probably the time where I was probably my most authentic self, where I didn't have any biases. And yeah. I was actually living a life that was really clear. And I was actually bringing out the best in people. I mean, back then I actually started a newspaper for my street with my buddies and I was just writing down their stories and sharing it with people and it was connected to the street and it, it became vibrant. And guess what? That's what I, it connected me back to that, which actually started this journey. It yeah. was that, at that point in time, I needed to say, you know what? Let's stop being so serious. Let's connect to the kid inside of ourselves. Let's yeah. connect to what's possible. Let's see the beauty, the whys, the why nots. All the things that we thought about and then like you know what worked you know, work and life took over we got responsible and we got real serious and forgot to play we forgot to wonder we forgot to connect we started worlds. protecting we had that fear we were preserving what we had yeah we got yeah. we got and then we got confined into a bubble yeah yeah it's interesting uh that it, that story started with italian ice one of our guests uh, and a very good friend dr ernesto ciroli he was a uh, a young Italian development economist that went down to Africa and started working with, um, you know, people in communities that, that, that the Europeans at least thought needed more help. And they realized uh, a very similar story to what you have, which is 
when you go in and you you do work for others it, it doesn't really land very well um but when you go in and you ask others what are you passionate about what did you do as a kid what what excited you as a kid um before you had these pressures and conformities that 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 you know the social structure puts upon us um they found that they could they could find these creators these makers in these economies these influencers that actually built something that was good for the community and and weren't just enforcing you know european rule on, on these local communities without a lot of local context i, I can't wait to go listen to that i, I couldn't agree with it more because I was actually on another podcast and the podcaster went through this cycle of questions when I shared that story. And, he, and then he said, when's the last time you felt this way? And I was like, whoa, like it was like magical. I went back to this point and it reminded me of, you know, Pablo Picasso uh -huh. says he was his most creative self as a, as a painter when he was five. And he said he was trying yeah. to go back to that level for the rest of his life. And it's the same, yeah. it's the same thing. It's, where we allow we allow ourselves to be our most creative self, where we can wonder, we could actually think and connect different things without without like tripping any rules. We we're allowed yeah. to actually draw outside of the lines a little bit without getting in trouble. Yeah, which which is interesting because um, getting in trouble. There's a theme that we talk about a lot in teams in workplaces, which is psychological safety. Yeah. And you know when people feel like they're coming to work because they have a job and they have metrics to hit they don't have a lot of opportunity to explore, to pioneer, to try new things, to be creative because there's a job to do. And, you know, it's more than 40 hours often that we're trying to squeeze into 40 hours, but for lots of different reasons. Um, so that is interesting. I see on your website here, um, you, you had something there about only 2% of employees feel like they're given the opportunity to be creative in their jobs. That's a very low number. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because the, the inverse of that, going back to the average five-year-old, it's about 98% show these skills and then it starts to go downhill Yeah, for the, for the very reasons that we've talked about. And, you know, it's true that uh, companies that focus on creativity actually find new revenue, ch new channels and have mm -hmm. higher results with the revenue, higher revenues and better bottom line outcomes. So creativity is for real. And it's, yeah. it's, it's taking the time and being intentional and being safe to actually share ideas, make crazy connections. Cause you know, when we, when we allow ourselves to kind of pop around and you know, I don't know if you've ever done one of those exercises where you say, Hey, come up with as many ideas as you can in five minutes. And then things are just popping, right? Pop, pop, pop. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you kind of, it kind of slows down like a popcorn popper and you get one and then, then it slows down and then it stops until you add another variable or. You start yeah. to share across other tables or other people in the room, and then you, then it starts to pop again. And that's where innovation and discoveries happen. And it's because we're allowed to do it without judgment. We're allowed to do it without people saying, well, where the heck did that idea come from? And we're, we're actually, you know, yeah. we're not letting like silly ideas get in the way of amazing. Like the, what could be, what, you know, what is possible? That's yeah, I think that's right. I think um, if you're stuck at work trying to get this many units shipped today, that it's not a safe place to try a new tool for taking an order off the shelf to the vehicle or whatever it might be. Yeah. I, I personally feel we need to do a better job giving time for people to think. Yeah. Uh, that also means for people to actually, if they want to have hybrid environments where people, they want people to go back to work or even to use yeah. technology differently in the future of work, we need to create collaborative spaces to allow for these things, throw a problem out there, throw an idea out there, throw, something where you would like a team that's cross-functional, diverse, working together, you will yeah. be amazed at what you'll find. You know, if you're an HR leader or a business leader, try it out. Try it out with a small team. Experiment with it. Yeah. You, you're going to be amazed what people do. They find, A, they find capacity because, you know, everybody says, I have too much work. I can't even imagine. Like you said, I'm, I got 45 hours in a 40. Yeah. You know what happens? There's capacity to be had for this type of work. People are excited. People develop, people develop new skills by actually contributing in these team environments. People develop because they want to actually participate in other parts of a company or other area they get excited about. And they take the knowledge they have from somewhere else. This is just like the connection of, I, you know, we typically connect to each other be, based on sameness, <clears throat> but the beauty is actually connecting our sameness with, with the differences that we don't know. And yeah. we actually bring them with us. 
that's discovery. That's innovation. That's creativity. Yeah. No, I like that. And, and I've seen some of those innovation exercises where, um, you know, people will be bought in and they're told, well, you can only draw squares and circles and you've got to create an image that represents this. And you've got people from different departments with different levels of creativity, but they actually find some sameness in all being terrible at the task at hand <laughs> and having to explain it to each other. And it, it creates a, it lowers the, their guards and it creates this opportunity for them then to move into the, the solution storming, you know, thought provoking elements of, of the workshop. No, it's well said. I think we allow some of the things that slow us down to go to the wayside, like doubt or fear, yeah. um, or being wrong or perceived to be wrong. <clears throat> yeah. And I was at a separate workshop where we had to bring stuff that we didn't want anymore to this workshop. And then we throw it all in the mix and then we randomly pick stuff out. And then we were asked to create things out of these old junk items that we had to, we had to break them down to the smallest parts. And then we had to piece them together to create whatever it is the instructor told us to make. And we only had a half hour to do all of it. And guess what happened? Yeah. We had a team of four and we did it and we laughed. We had so much fun. We created these, these, um, uh, I guess working pieces of art because they were not perfect. Yet yeah. They were beautiful because we did it. We didn't think we yeah. could. That is fun. And that's, that's a muscle memory that it's great to create in teams as well is yeah. that you take them away, you let them achieve something they didn't think that they could and, and realize that what your day job is or your hierarchical position in org chart isn't isn't critical for in, in the context of that little exercise. Yeah. And it's and to your point on, on the position and title, gosh, it's so important to see people involved at all levels. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you're the CEO or head of HR diversity, gosh, it's even more important to actively involved, being vulnerable, sharing that maybe you don't, you're not the best drawer. Like I'm not, I'm a stick drawer yet. I've realized yeah. I can be creative. It's just in a different way. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. I think tying to creativity, there's also a sense of pride that comes with that too. My, my two business partners, um, we refitted one of our offices here in Tustin and we had a number of the team coming in for the first time to the office. This was soon after the, you know, the lockdowns of the pandemic. And uh, I walked into the conference room one day and they've, they've acquired this beautiful conference table that has like a river in the middle of it, like a glass river. Um, with a live edge that's turned inside. It's great design. That's cool. And I walk into the conference room and I spot something odd. And sure enough, there's a rag underneath the table cleaning it. And it's my two business partners are on their back, David and Russell, lifting the glass carefully and cleaning it before the team comes in. And I just want, I, I wanted to take a photo of that at the time and share that with the team. I'm like, this is how much sharing this space with you all uh, means to the the owners of the business. That's yeah. a that, that's a pretty cool story. That's a really um, cool story. Not creativity, but it's it's taking pride for what we share together, which I think is a a near parallel. Yeah, it's I think it's I think it's wonderful and seeing leaders do some of the work themselves that maybe some leaders might not do. They'd ask someone else to do it, and they're not willing to do yeah. it. So, and I understand there's a time and a place for things. Yet that shared some level of pride that. They wanted this to be just right for everybody. And that says a lot. Yeah, definitely. So shifting to the book, uh, Darren, like, you know, walk me through the approach, what, what you're introducing your readers to in the book, because I'd like to learn that and then maybe jump a little bit into how you do the experiential um, workshops with, with customers, you know, as a follow on to that. Yeah, that's, that's great. I appreciate that. Yeah. The book is called Live Your Possible. And what I'm trying to get folks to understand is that this is a journey. It's, it's essentially a life guide to help people pursue their authentic, inclusive, and joyful selves. That's essentially what this book is. And it's, it's a life guide, meaning it's, there, there's definitely a storytelling and there's a thread throughout around building a possible mindset. So mm -hmm. it, the first track sets up why we're doing this, why there's a need for change, the idea for partnering with someone else, maybe use this as a book club or a team it sets, it sets the need for change and it's not looking for people to change into somebody else. It's actually helping us to reconnect with our authentic self. I like that. So it shouldn't feel like work because we always say change. Oh, it's too hard. I don't have time. It's too much effort. But if we current can reconnect back to who we really are, like maybe it's back to our 
five-year-old self, nine-year-old self, like we were kidding mm -hmm. around about. But yeah, you know what? That is what I'm talking about. Our most innocent, authentic self, where we can actually be free to think and welcome the world indifferently. And then it gets, it goes through an acronym, which is, uh, spells out possible, which is really developing a possible mindset. Right. And there are, uh, intentional practice actions over a hundred throughout those, those eight chapters. No, you don't have to do all of them, Dane. Uh, <laughs> you know, it's, there are some questions that will actually simple. Yes. No. Uh, are you good at this? Or you, you know, do you want to learn more about X, Y, Z, depending on how you answer those, that'll lead you to identify the questions that actually pertain to you. What I'm uh -huh. hearing and experiencing that if you actually identify openly with those questions and take five or seven of those actions seriously over time, you're going to feel a big change. Some people are feeling a change, you know, within three months. Uh, I, I have felt, I felt change immediately within 30 days. However, I, I change forever after six months of practicing the uh, different yeah. things along the possible mindset. And then the last part is how do you sustain uh, joy and happiness? And how do you sustain looking at, you know, possibilities with abundance? How do you, how do you actually practice this in the workplace? How do you practice this in the community? And there's a bunch of stories that I share of my own. I'm pretty vulnerable, mm -hmm. as you could already probably tell based on what I've already yeah. shared. Uh, I, I've interviewed a bunch of other leaders, best practice uh, folks out in different parts of the world that are you know, heads of HR, uh, head of diversity, CEOs, et cetera. And I also, also incorporate a QR code throughout. So there's a QR right. code that creates supplemental learning tied to my website. What, why is that important, Dane? Because I want people to actually grow and learn. This is about taking action and it's about change. It's not just, I'm not telling people to be happy or go be inclusive or authentic. No, I'm showing you how yeah. to become these things as, you know, as your best authentic self, how to be joyful every day, how to be a better leader, how to, how to embrace love in the workplace, how to lead with joy, how to, how to do, how to do these things. And these QR codes actually take you out to uh, sets of music, maybe a comedian, maybe a children's book maybe a TED talk, whatever it is that's actually rel relative to the topic that I'm talking about in the book, that'll actually get you to connect with it differently than what I'm sharing yeah. in the book. So there's proof in the fact that spiritual learning is multiple things coming at you at once. And if you take the steps to the actions, you will change because you'll see things where if, as long as you're looking at this from a standpoint, I'm going to continuously grow, right? I'm going to commit to myself. I'm going to commit to the actions. I'm not going to beat myself up if I don't see the, the reactions I want right away, or if I fail to do yeah. something that day, it's about a growth mindset. What am I going to unlearn, relearn, do differently tomorrow? Take the actions, follow through and keep doing it. And like any kind of habit change, it takes a little time. Yet yeah. what I'm trying to do, as I mentioned before, I'm trying to encourage you to do this as part of your day. Yes. You know, it's part of your actions. You know, if, if you're, say you're somebody that gets frustrated in meetings, you know, ask yourself questions about, looking for what's positive. What are they trying to get, you know, what are, what are they trying to get out of what they're talking about? Try to understand where they're coming from. Even ask questions yeah. that shows that you're interested to learn more. So to take an active approach rather than judging someone that's speaking or maybe being negative. Like that's an example. I'm trying to get people to think with a positive mindset, make positive connections, start to believe in other people. Cause yeah. that, even that simple action over a course of 30 days will change in how you look at the world. I think you're right. And we talked a bit, a bit about that on the show is that sometimes people get stuck in a pattern of behavior and they don't know why. Yeah. Like they're agitated, they're anxious, they're negative. But is that because someone's displayed a behavior to them? Is it because they're struggling with a financial situation or a relationship situation at home? They don't know why. Is it because of something that they read on social media? Um, but, but we all come in with a handicap as team members when... Yeah when people are just reacting out of pattern rather than being present in that moment and exploring. I like the way that you looked about it, believing in others, exploring that possibility together. And, it, and it's ste stepping in to calm our minds because we are in these patterns to your point. And these patterns yeah. could be just the patterns of work. And I'm at another meeting and here we go. And it's like, how do we break the pattern? It's not going to change unless we change it. And we have yeah. to be intentional about the change. That's how we change habits. I think too often we hear words, we get, we kind of cringe or we become divisive or we, or we, you know, we react. We don't yeah. slow our mind down to say, well, wait a minute, where is this coming from? And why am I reacting to then? Okay. Let, wait a minute. Let's have a conversation to make something better out of it. And 
I joke about this in my book a little bit, but I'm serious about there's a, there's a way to uh, calm our minds. Certainly you've heard of mindfulness and breathing and having gratitude and those things. Yeah. Yeah. You know, kind of being in the moment when we start to feel ourselves get angry or furious, I think someone said when, when you're furious, get curious. So get curious and slow down. And, and there's this, this part of our brain, this hippocampus where it's the gateway of our emotions. And I joke about it too, because I say, well, it's a happy hippo, happy hippocampus. And yeah. why, you know, it's kind of like drop the hippo in a situation where it's uncomfortable, whether there's, there's a feeling of doubt or there's an elephant in the room. Like, no, let's drop that in and say, wait a minute. I need to check in on this. I need to understand. We? I need to inquire, not to debate, not to be divisive. And it, this is a technique that I would imagine HR professionals are comfortable with. It's, you know, something that I, I learned while I was studying crucial conversations with vital smarts. Mm -hmm. It's about stepping in and slowing down and get, getting conscious because subconscious minds and thinking, it rules the day. Yeah. You know, I yeah, it like it when I forget that I just drove a mile, thank God my subconscious mind can drive. Yet I don't like it when I'm mistreating people like I was talking about early in my story where I wasn't really mindful of how I was pushing people and possibilities away. Yeah. That, that, um, I'd never heard that when you're furious, get curious, but that makes so much sense too. I mean, when you think about it, uh, regardless of how divisive, you know, some of our communities or organizational settings teams can be now, um, often, and, and we had a speaker t share this with us recently, often people get stuck because they think that what they're perceiving of a problem is the truth and the other person has their belief as the truth. And so the truth becomes the enemy because neither side's curious and, and both the both sides end up getting frustrated and yeah. dysfunctional and it, it blows up. But if, if curiosity is the go-to, then you've got to think that through the right sort of wisdom questions, you can find where that elephant in the room is or why, why, why are we not finding a way past this problem? Yeah. we got to drop, drop that hippo back in and you know, it's, yeah. you know, with all seriousness, it's about le a level. This is actually the second part of the uh, possible acronym. It's open-minded yeah. curiosity. So open-mindedness is our willingness to, to listen and hear other things. We'll uh -huh. take it in. Having curiosity is actually taking it in to change our perspectives, to learn why it's different, why it's better together, why it's better to learn the other perspective and not judging and holding other people against it. Yeah. That's what we're doing today. It's so divisive yeah. in so many, in so many ways, in so many layers, you know, there are trigger words. I mean, I was just hanging out with family members. And I said a couple of words and it just triggered and I didn't get angry. I just had the conversation. Tell me more. Where is this coming from for you? Why does this bother you? Tell me, what are we trying to do in the workplace? Yeah. What are we trying to do in society? Are we trying yeah. to help everybody? Or are we only trying to help ourselves? Like when we, when we actually boil it down, Dane, like you were saying, we we're both frustrated and us versus them actually is us versus us. We just yeah. don't realize it. And when we actually boil it down, we actually want the same thing. And that, you know, that's something that Vital Smarts did a nice job in their training where they talk about try to find that level of common purpose, bring it up a level. And that's yeah. what we're talking about. How do we find that level of humanness or humanity together that says, no, we're fighting about something that's trivial. It doesn't really matter if we're really trying to solve something bigger than us. And that's really the first part of the acronym for purpose driven beliefs is we need to find our higher purpose, something that's yeah. outside of ourselves. That's something with greater meaning where we can invite the world in. Again, bringing that one-eyed smile in, we're inviting the world in. Yeah, yeah, I like that a lot. And you mentioned when you started explaining the eight chapters of the book, you talked about being able to do it as a book club. So have you found with some of your readers or, or customers, if you're going in and doing experiences, that they'll start reading together and, and processing some of these questions and actions as a group? Yes, yes. It's been really fun to to hear some of the responses and some organizations have called me in to say, Hey, would you participate in, you know, one of our events? And I said, I would love to. Yeah. And I would step in and, and uh, give a little bit of an overview and people would ask me some questions and then we would jump into wherever they were in the book club. And I'll give you an example of a hospital in Florida uh -huh. in the United States where they're, they were on a journey to change their culture because it's been so incredibly difficult over the last several years, right? Burnout retention has been horrible. They lost 50% of the nursing staff. There's already nursing shortages. Uh, patient saf safety isn't where it could be or should yeah. be. Uh, you know, the financials take a hit every time you got to replace somebody and, and try to regain the momentum, of quality, of all these things, right? Yeah. So 
the chief nursing officer met with the CEO and they started a book club and they started with actually Sean Aker's book, Happiness Advantage. Mm -hmm. Sean Aker actually, actually woke up my mind to thinking happiness is a platform for change. It really is. When yeah. you watch his TED talk and you read his book, there are little things that we need to do every single day that allows us to grow and be successful in our day and to connect with joy and happiness. And yeah. he even talks about the fact that our success in our job is only 25% of our intelligence is 75% of what we do and how we do it. And so then this, this hospital needed the second book and they, they chose my book. I'm so thankful for, and live your possible ended up what they called it to be transformational. They actually yeah. got more people involved to help people thrive and they created joy in the workplace. And th what they learned is to switch the order of focus away from the, the outcomes and the patient. I know that sounds kind of scary. Yeah, what they did is says, no, we need to change our focus to be to the caregiver. Because if we trust and involve and engage the caregiver, the employees, yeah. and guess what happens? The patients, that's you know, they become safer. The le there's less risk, le less risk of falls, and uh, they actually recover faster. And they're actually, and this happened. The retention went yeah. from fifty percent uh, um, lapse rates to less than ten percent in like like nine months, something like that. Which is huge. They actually, their patient safety went to a top quartile in the, almost 90% of the categories uh, just because they actually changed their approach. And why? Because they needed to change how they viewed each other. And the leader stepped in too. They walked yeah. to talk. They participated yeah. on in different exercises. They didn't say they had all the answers. They actually gotten people involved to say, how could we change? And when they actually did this and made people feel safe to contribute, oh my God, people took over. And now, now the CEO is like, this is a career extender for me because I want to keep doing this work. It's so much fun. Other people that were saying they couldn't stay in work anymore are excited to come to work again. So it, it wasn't, it's less about my book to be clear, Dane. This is all about what the people believed in. They, yeah. they saw that this stuff worked somewhere else. Cause there's, there's examples of my book. They took the premises of it and they, they applied it to what would make sense for their hospital. And now yeah. they're like a top performing hospital. They're being recognized throughout the state of Florida. They're not talking across platforms, across health organizations across the country. And it's because they actually chose the path. They followed through on it. They walked the talk and they believed in their people again. And now guess what? They're tapping into the potential, the same people that were there before. Yeah. I love that. That's a great case study. And, and particularly in a hospital, I've, I've got a massive Robin Williams crush. And uh, I loved him in Patch Adams too, and where he brought a little bit of happiness, a little bit of a different approach to health. Um, and, and that's just where my brain's going. I'm picturing these nurses and these administrators and doctors and, and everyone just getting together and saying, how can we help each other be better humans? How can we be curious together? So it sounds like, it sounds like the book has been maybe not the red nose that Patch Adams used, but maybe it's more that catalyst for curiosity and, and, getting the team into a pattern of asking questions and, and, and to your earlier point, being creative and trying to solve together. Yeah. I appreciate that. And I think you're right. I think it was a, a catalyst for, for them to realize that, you know, continue the journey that happiness is part of the change process and inclusion. Inclusion is an action. Again, don't yeah. get caught up in the word. It's an action of how we bring in all people's perspectives, uh, no matter where we come from, what we look like, and the ideas we have, it's inviting people in. And when we do that, people feel welcome. They feel they matter. And when those yeah. things happen, it's, you know, cultures transform, hospitals transform, yeah. patients transform. Their community there is actually couldn't be happier. It just, it's just for real. That was my point, Dane. It's, yeah. you know, showing people that they are possible and they actually start to believe it themselves. It's amazing what happens. And that's what gives me yeah. so much. It gives me chills to think about it. Yeah. Yeah, no, me too. That's really powerful. It's interesting. Um, I'm definitely going to read your book, maybe in a family setting. Maybe we do a family book club because uh, I've got a couple of uh, middle schoolers now and a, and a five-year-old who's trying to be a middle schooler. Um, and then my wife and I are dealing with all of that. But I, but when you think about some of the um, the conversations that can be had through taking that approach, through you know having that openness of mindset, um, it, it's got to help teams, not just at work, but, you know, students and teachers, yeah. parents and kids in sports clubs that might be parents and coaches or coaches and kids. I mean, it, it seems pretty universal. I, I'd like to think so too, Dane. I pre appreciate that. You know, part of my learning comes from 
I, I actually was a coach for youth sports teams. I, I actually coached uh-huh. about 30 teams. And, That's a and lot of teams. I got to tell you, I learned more about management from teaching these kids. I mean, talk about kids that were, they were putting themselves out there. I mean, they were yeah. real authentic. They were, yeah. you know, they were presenting every challenge you could imagine. And as long as I shared a level of care and genuine interest and showed that they can and showed them how, because that's what teachers and leaders need to do, right? We need to show how, and we need to continue yeah. learning ourselves with new techniques and new ways of doing this. So this applies to, like you said, teachers in schools. Uh, this also applies, I would say in politics because, yeah. you know, there's some folks that have approached me to say, can you bring this to Congress? You know, this us versus them. I said, well, yeah, yeah. sure. Uh, let me know. Fix the debt ceiling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so, yeah, I think it's applicable, too. I, You know, I, there's another yeah. book, too, uh, called The Simple Seed, which is wonderful for for kids and teachers. Uh, uh, Katie Wood was on my podcast, uh, you know, about a month and a half ago. And, Dane, I, I would recommend you, you go with yeah. that one, too, because it's about gratitude. And it actually starts the day of kids about how they think about who they are and what they can be versus the, you know, the questions or starting with a phone or, you know, not thinking that they own any part of change. Like how we talk about adults, like you own, each of us own culture. We own yeah. change. We own it based on what we do. Same thing yeah. with our children. Like when you go to school or you, you go into your community, um, she asked someone and I asked the same thing in my book, Hey, who can you make smile today? Who can you light up today? Like yeah. be intentional and thoughtful. And if you don't do that, meaning the person you don't, you wanted to, you didn't see, well, find the moment. Like, so you're, you're looking for it again. You're getting curious. You're being open-minded. You're trying to make a difference, but yeah. in a slight way, hey, guess what happens, right? It's a ripple effect. That person probably lights up and hopefully they pay it forward. Uh, yeah, yeah I, would, I would definitely recommend her book to the listeners. Is, you know, Katie uh, Wood, Simple Seed. Kid. I'll definitely pick up on that. It's interesting um, that we've kind of moved into the school environment because there's a lot of young children that are growing up with some crazy levels of anxiety and stress yeah. and structure. Um, my wife actually just recently took a, a part-time job as a campus supervisor at the local middle school. And um, I'm going to have to share this with her too, because she's had a few interesting experiences. She had to pick a kid up and out of class and take him to the, the principal's office the other day. And all the other kids were like, oh, you're in trouble. And she made a lighthearted comment. She was like, maybe not. Maybe he's getting cookies. And all of a the sudden, there were some laughs and the kid kind of lit up a bit. Like, hey, this supervisor's not here to like take me to the gallows. Yeah. Um, and she saw the same kid after school and she was like, did you get cookies? And he laughed. He was like, no, but, you know, he's, she's now built this relationship with him where, you know, he's going to be a little bit more responsive. He's going to know who she is and she's going to be a little bit more caring. So it brings that whole care ethic in, yeah. which unfortunately you don't see particularly in schools or in any kind of youth environments where there's this kind of authority over kids. It's, you know, sometimes it's, um, it's a little bit harsh. And I think some of the approaches that you're using, certainly the experience that Claire had, it, it just brings a bit more humanity to bear. Yeah. I mean, it's proven to work. I mean, there's so much work that's done that I I just talked with Jane Dutton. She talks about positive connections and the importance of how we work together. And, you know, she's a profound professor from University of Michigan's Ross Business School. And she started the uh, positive uh, business consortium with a a few other co-founders. And Mm -hmm. like she's one of the pioneers in the positivity movement. Yeah. And she talks about how we as a community at work or in a classroom, like we need to do different things. Like we need to three steps from what I remember. She, she had said like, Hey, we need to take notice. Like in your example that we took notice, we felt something like, so what do we do? Do we react and go negative? Do we come down hard on somebody? Like I, I've had several bosses that would, would just come down on me rather than find out what's happening. You know, give me the stinger from a B type of thing. And then, yeah. you know, the third step is really let's respond with grace and care and kindness. It doesn't mean we're letting anybody off the hook. Yet we're yeah. inquiring. We're getting curious again. We're trying to figure out where this is coming from. And we're doing this with grace. You know, we're doing this with genuine care and interest. And I recall I had a boss that was saying I needed to be harder on people. I need to make people feel uncomfortable. I need to use that stinger. 
Yeah. And it, it was probably the first time I realized I wasn't being myself if I actually just said yes. Because I, I probably was being difficult. I wasn't my best self as a leader. As I was going through this transformation, I realized, no, I like the honey approach. Yeah. And it doesn't mean everybody gets a participant you know, trophy. This is about, no, I can give direct feedback while being kind. And yes. just sharing what this means. Because I need to know what matters to that individual. Like, what is their higher purpose? What is their need? You know, why are they doing these things? Because I want to help them get through it, not punish them for the moment. I want to help them get through it so they can learn. That's a growth mindset. We got to yeah. get through it and we got to, yeah. we got to learn from it. And that's something I'm, I'm teaching with uh, different universities. Like I was at university of Connecticut. Uh -huh. I gave a lecture about self care and everything you said about anxiety and isolation is very true. And we had to think about mental well being as an action where we can mm -hmm. take the steps to look through and you know, yeah, it's important. We have to eat and sleep and exercise. Sure, we got to do those things. Yes, we have to calm our minds down. Like we talked about the hippocampus with breathing and mindfulness. Those things help. Yet the things that we have to think about relate to, let's not judge ourselves if we don't get the A. Because you know what? Yeah. Taking a class is one step along something bigger. Because we're all yeah. trying to do something bigger in life. Higher purpose. Yeah, yeah we want to get a job. And happiness is not about making a ton of money. No. Yeah. You know, it's an outcome. I mean, outcomes... You know, they say in certain studies, you know, outcomes tend to give us about 10% of our happiness and joy of the, of the day, yet it's 40, 50% of what we do. It's all, you know, yeah. that the whole joy in the journey, it's not as cliche as it sounds. It's true. If yeah. we can connect on our actions every single day, you know, having an open minded set of curiosity, inviting the world in, learning from our mistakes, learning from our failures, not allowing ourselves to beat ourselves up, you know, yeah. allows us to learn and expand our skill sets. You know, allows us to become more resilient in, in, in you know, dark days. So we can pull ourselves out of it and so on yeah. and so on. It allows us to be our authentic self where we can actually imagine with joy and wonderment. Be that five-year-old kid, kid again where we can discover and we can innovate and we can kind of link to the world in a different way. We can connect with joy and truly endless possibilities exist when we actually slow down Yeah, and start to I, and I, revisit all this. And I, and I like the slowing down. We touched on that at the beginning of this discussion, and it's it's an essential part both for the self care, but also for the teams. Yeah. You know, building that muscle of curiosity and and questioning and action. What um, as a final question, you know, as you as you think about the future of work, the future of teams, embracing this kind of live your possible uh, methodology mindset. Um, what do you think it looks like? How, how would you like to be in working with more organizations or having other organizations ab adopting your approach to, to really make lasting, you, you mentioned sustainable, lasting sustainable changes to the way that we show up as humans? I would say there are a few phases and don't get caught up in the words for a second. Yeah. Like this first phase, and they all kind of align to mattering because this first phase is really, I feel like you start a job, you're starting with an organization. Maybe there's a new leader that comes in. So we need to make sure we actually belong, we're welcomed, and we know the direction we're going in, right? So we know the vision we know the purpose, like why we exist. You know, we're yeah. trying to get results. We're, we're kind of participating in that way. And then the second phase is actually, I would call a learning phase uh, where not only are we seen from where we were welcome, but now we are heard. So now we're involved. We're, we're contributing in a different way where yeah. we can, like we're impacting customers. We're now we're having an impact to our customers. And the third phase is actually fo changing the focus to be on our people, to, to understand that we can trust our people. That's where we're going to thrive. That's where innovation happens. That's where creativity happens. That's where this abundance mindset can exist, where this is where possibilities start popping everywhere where we actually yeah. believe in each other. We, we help people connect to what they do to something that's more impactful. You know, why we exist, our values. Our values just aren't on our wall. They're not on a website. They're actually what we live. It's, you know, the decisions we make, it's what we reward people for. And it's how people could step in. And all this is so important because we need to get people involved. That's the other yeah. thing, getting people involved. And people say, well, isn't that engagement? I'm like, no, it's a little bit more than that. Yeah. It's actually asking people to, Hey, I have these problems. I have these ideas. I have the direction. Can you help me solve this? 
because a lot of leaders say, this is what we're doing, eight week program, here are the initiatives, here are the project, who wants in? It's like, well, hold on. Stop at the values and, and you know problems and areas that we need to consider. Maybe even involve your people there because I've had yeah. really good success about involving people at that level too to identify values. It is groundbreaking. People light up. You know, as we joke about capacity, people find it. People yeah. want to contribute in different ways. People get involved and people start to want to learn and, and participate in ways you've never seen before. And they start, everybody starts to believe in each other in a, in a whole different way. And that's what I'm talking about. Getting people to belong yeah. and matter in a holistic way, an inclusive way that's authentic, where leaders care. They're stepping in, walking the talk, asking, listening, participating, taking action together, reinforcing, you know, recognizing, training, have a lot, having fun in the workplace. Yeah. Be, yeah. Being thankful, being grateful, right? Be doing these type of things. Um, and then I have to say this other thing is that technology is in front of us. You got AI, right? Mm -hmm. Artificial intelligence. There's tools around us. We need to embrace it. Yeah. We need to embrace the tools. We need to, I think it's, I think it's a responsibility of community leaders and corporate leaders to help our people be trained and be ready. And then, yeah. you know, bring the tools in. Don't just throw the tools on top because like if I'm using this tool, this IM tool and an email, forget it. That's not going to work. We had to figure out how to make it so it intersects to make my job easier so I could participate in solving in those problems again. So yeah. we could actually make greater contributions. And guess what? This is going to help us in the hybrid environment too. It's going to work when yeah. we're remote. It's going to work while we're actually together because we're going to, we could have collaboration teams and squads. It's going to help in any situation because I know there's a lot of people struggling with that, but we can't just be the way we were and anticipate people to actually be different. As technology hits us, we're working remotely in, in hybrid environments. We have to change how we work and invite people in. Yeah. That's yeah. how we're going to change the way we work and how we're going to actually address the problems we have in different entities. We're going to actually achieve results you can never imagine. Yeah. I'm excited by that vision, Darren. I think that's um, it's exciting, and I appreciate that you're bringing in this embrace AI, embrace technology mindset too. Because we, you're right, we have to create more room and space for people to 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 behave in this way, um, and it's not going to happen tomorrow. Um, you know, you're not going to be able to hire more people to do the work and create room for people. You're going to need to embrace those technologies. Yeah, I think we, I think we have to change the dynamic of the workplace, meaning, Hey, if I'm, let's just say I'm a co contact center rep and I'm on the calls yeah. that day long, right? 90 yeah. plus percent of the time. Uh, we need to dial that back. We need to yeah. dial back to, I don't know, pick your number, experiment with it. 70%. I like 75%. My business partner, Russell always talks about it. if we could just throttle that, people back to 75, we've got room, we've got space. We have the space to actually practice well being elements. Yeah. We yeah. could actually be more collaborative. We could step in to provide, hey, here's what I'm hearing from my customer set, or here's what I think could help us be more effective. Allow people to step in. Even, you know what, maybe I, I want to participate in the sales team, something that's totally different because that's where I want to end up in five years. Yeah. But we need to change the dynamic. And that's, to me, it's going to help people cope with hybrid, the remote, and not feel so isolated because we're belonging, we're participating, we're mattering in different parts, and yeah. we're connecting to a much greater future. Yeah. No, I love that. And- you told me, disclaimer, don't get caught up on the words, you know, belonging, learning. But there was one word that just kept resonating to me. And I think I marked you down to saying it six times. You said involved. And to me, that's one of the biggest things that I'm taking away from this conversation is that your, your call to action is that companies, leaders need to create a space where their teams and people that touch their teams can be more involved. And I think that's huge. I think that's a... Yeah, that, that is on. a you very caught, you caught me direct on that word. You caught me on that <laughs> one because when when leaders initially ask me about what I think, I'll say two words: get yeah. involved. And it's about your people. Get involved. Yeah, get yeah. getting people involved in being genuine and sincere, inviting people to participate, and being clear yeah. that it's this is an open open game. Granted, there's times where leaders have to make the decision. Be clear yeah. about it, and just say you need a decision or you need to input and you got to move fast. There are plenty of times and opportunities to invite people in to participate and get involved. And it opens up people's minds and back to the creativity thinking, yeah. the possible mindset, people working better as a team, being more inclusive, being like good human beings to each other. Like that's what yeah. we're talking about. It's about, you know, it's empathy. Yeah. 
no empathy kindness caring lots lots of uh lots of good energy coming from that darren well thank you for joining uh me for this discussion today i'm sure our listeners are going to have a blast tuning in if they want to follow up and and reach out to you to learn more about um, the work that you do with ignite happy or experiential workshop speaking how do they best find you you know, you could go to my website, ignitehappy.com. There's access through there, or you could simply go on LinkedIn and uh, send yeah. me a, a note there. That's That could be real easy to connect and we could we could go offline and have a conversation. And I'm happy to, to consult and uh, help you out and think through whatever you're, whatever you're thinking. No, that sounds good. I'm sure you'll get a few follow-up. And also uh, the podcast, Live Your Possible. So they can find that on what, Apple, Spotify, all, all of your typical places that you would listen to podcasts. So it's out there. Live yeah. your possible. You know, it's an extension of this conversation, right? We're trying to get people to share stories about, you know, what they've overcome as far as challenges and they're paying it forward. You know, they're all different folks from around the world and what they're doing to embrace uh, how we could bring out the best in people uh, in different ways, inclusively through joy, uh, through laughter, through love. Um, you know, as I mentioned, you know, scholar of Jane, Jane Dutton, uh, she was one of yeah. our guests recently and there's many more, many more to come. So there, there's lots of places that you can learn, uh, on my podcast as well. And, and I welcome you there and you can actually just go to my website, ignitehappy.com and it's, it's right there too. Right there. Neat. All right. I'll definitely be tuning in. Well, Thank thanks you. again for taking the time to join us today. Hey, Darren. It's, it's been an honor, Dane. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate everything you're doing.